Sairam students, let's begin with the today's session of class 8 history. Children, we are doing the third part of chapter number 10 today. The chapter's name is India after independence. In our content, children, if you remember, we have already completed with the topic a new and divided nation. We have already started with the topic a constitution is written. Still today also we'll be continuing with the same topic a constitution is written. But before coming to the today's uh, points, let us discuss what we have learned in our last live lecture. Okay. What did we see in that? We have seen the constitution was written in between the December 1946 and November 1949, right? And for that we saw like some 300 Indians, they had the series of meetings on the country's political future. Then we saw the meetings of this constituent assembly were also held in New Delhi, right? Then finally we saw that it resulted in the framing of the Indian constitution which came into effect on, yes, 26th of January 1950, yeah. Then what have we seen? We have seen one feature of the constitution was its adoption of universal adult franchise. You have understood the meaning of this very well, right? All Indians above the age of 21 would be allowed to vote in state and national election. See, initially it was 21, but then it was changed to 18 years, right? Then we have learnt about the second feature of the constitution was that it guaranteed equality before the law to all citizens, regardless of their caste or religion, right? So this topics we have covered in our live session. Now in in this video lesson, you will be learning about the next third feature of the constitution. Let's begin with that. This is what we have already seen in our last uh, live lecture, right? These two features. Now moving to the next one. A third feature of the constitution was that it offered special privileges for the poorest and the most disadvantaged Indians. Now, your children, we are talking about the practice of untouchability, right? The practice of untouchability was described. It was described as a slur and a blot on the fair name of India. So, that was abolished. But what is that? The fair name, see, India's name is fair. But that uh, phrase has been given as a slur and a blot. That means mark of disgrace that is given on the name of fair name of India that is the practice of untouchability was considered as the mark of disgrace that was abolished right and then the Hindu temples previously open to only the higher caste now to understand it previously it was open only for the higher caste were thrown open to all including the former untouchables so that was a change there right now let's move to the next after that what happened after a long debate the constituent assembly also recommended that a certain percentage of seats in legislature as well as jobs in government should be reserved for the members of the lowest caste. Children, if you will compare this with the political science, you have seen the uh, reservations, right? We have learned in our chapter in political science about this reservation. It is like even the lower caste has a reservation today. See, actually social science, you have to connect all the three subjects to each other. So here we can have the comparison with the political science. You have learnt about the reservations for the lower caste, right? As well as for the women also we have seen. So after the long debate, the constituent assembly recommended like some percentage of seats should be reserved for the lower classes. Then it had been argued by some that untouchable or as they were known as Harijan. These candidates did not have good enough grades. Like uh, the grades that are required for joining the prestigious Indian Administrative Service. This is what it was believed in that way. The untouchables, that means the Harijan candidates, they don't have that much good enough grades to join that prestigious Indian Administrative Services. So this was, uh, uh, it was like argued by some that untouchables are not fit to join IAS, that is Indian Administrative Service. But then what happened then? 
but as a member of the constituent assembly what happened hj khandekar what did he say he argued that it was the upper caste who were responsible for the harijans see one of the member of the constituent assembly mr h j khandekar what did he say he said the upper caste is only responsible for the harijans that means they are being unfit today they are the the, the the caste that is responsible for making this harijans unfit is the upper caste then addressing him his more privileged colleagues he has still added something else in that he said we were suppressed for thousands of years you engaged us in your service to serve your own ends and suppressed us to such an extent that neither our minds nor our bodies and nor even our hearts work nor are we able to march forward see these are the really you can when you go through these words it really touches your heart what did he say see it is the upper caste is upper caste is the responsible caste which have made this harijans unfit for everything they were suppressed for thousands of years but then after the reservations then they were like they could get the good jobs also in the government as well as in legislative assemblies also but before that it was really very difficult for the her untouchables and harijans to work they were suppressed for thousands of years and they were engaged in only in the services for to serve other people to serve their ends and they were even uh, their minds and bodies they were not working at all even their hearts doesn't work so this is what they have, this kandikar he has tried to describe the feelings of the harijans here then he has said that along with the former untouchables the adivasis or we can say the scheduled tribes they were also granted reservations in seats and jobs right you have learned about the adivasi tribes also right and we have seen now even they have the reservations so like the scheduled caste these indians too have been deprived and discriminated against even the scheduled tribes that is adivasis even they had been neglected from the society but after the reservations and everything even they could achieve their jobs wherever whenever they can require so the tribals had been deprived of modern healthcare and education while their lands and forest had been taken away by more powerful outsiders i i hope you all remember this very well how the lands of the adivasis were taken away by the contractors right then the new privileges granted them by the constitution were meant to make amends for this now the new points that has been included in the constitution will grant the reservations as well as the jobs to the uh, scheduled caste as well as to the scheduled tribes the constituent assembly spent many days discussing the powers of the see after this issue the new another debate started here the constituent assembly spent many days discussing about the powers of the central government versus those of the state government now the question arises here like how the powers should be distributed among the central government and the state government then what happened there in some mem- some members they thought that the central centers interest must be should be the foremost matlab that means the central government should be taken into consideration it should be the foremost only a strong center it was argued would be in the position to think and plan for the well-being of a country as a whole this was the belief of by some of the members they were saying that if the center, if the uh, only a strong center can be having that uh, position to think and plan for the well-being of the other citizens of the country as a whole that means they will take into consideration all the individuals of that particular country so other members felt that the provinces should have greater autonomy and freedom whereas others they were have they were having the diff, uh, opposite arguments about for that 
they were believing the a state can do better way in that way so if the state has given that authority they can work in that way whereas some were in the hope like mem uh, central government can take the step central government is the only one central can only think and plan for the well being of everyone so again a member from the mysore he feared that under the present system democracy is centered in delhi and it is not allowed to work in the same sense and spirit in rest of the country see now here you can see the views of different members now a member from mysore has he has a fear in that way like the present system democracy is centered only in delhi and it is not allowed to work in the same sense and spirit in the other parts of the country then a member from madras even he insisted that the initial responsibility for the well being of the people of the provinces should rest with the provincial government it means they were believing that particular province can only think of the well being of the people those who are living in that particular state or in that province so they were believing that the provinces should have that authority they should have that power so that they can work for the well being of the people now what happened here the constitution sought to balance now constitution has to think of of some way to balance all these things right like to give the powers either to the central government or to the state government now the step that constitution took here is the constitution sought to balance these competing claims by providing three list of subjects now here the debate has been stopped here by providing by uh, by settling down that uh, claims by giving the three list of subjects now let's see how that three list of subjects is going to help us here first was a union list what the union list union means it means connected to center right with subjects such as taxes defense and foreign affairs which would be the exclusive responsibility of the center this is what was given in the union list that means the taxes defense and the foreign affairs all these matters would be exclusively seen by the center only it will be only the responsibility of the center to look after into all these subjects into all these matters that are provided in the union list then the second list was second one was a state list now what that state list was indicating here a state list of subjects such as education and health which would be taken care of principally by the states now this was the state's duty to look after the education as well as the health care facilities of that state okay that was given in the state list now the third one a concurrent list now what was there in the concurrent list concurrent list under which would come subjects such as forest and agriculture in which the center and the states would have joint responsibility see now the constitution has sorted out this matter in such a way like the three lists were made one was the union list second was the state list and the third was the concurrent list and the duties have been divided equally among each other like in union list the subjects such as taxes defense and foreign affairs that were taken care by the center okay and state list the education and healthcare facilities of that particular state will be taken by the state itself then the concurrent list gives us the matters here the gives us the subjects such as forest and agriculture in which the center and the states would have the joint responsibility so children let us revise what we have seen in the today's video lesson see today we have seen in uh, the topic is a constitution is written only we have continued with the same topic then we have seen the third feature of the constitution that is it offered the special privileges for the poorest and the most disadvantaged indians that is the practice of untouchability was abolished right then we saw like it was the hindu temples were open for everyone even the untouchables can go to the temple when what they want then the long debate started on the num the seats right the percentage of seats in legislature as well as the jobs in government be reserved for the members of the lowest caste that was also there 
then the next we saw like h j khandekar he has argued about like who is responsible upper caste they were only the responsible for the harijans being unfit today right then he addressed by giving some words also there we have learned that after that uh, untouchables we saw the adivasis or the scheduled tribes who were granted who were uh, they were also granted the reservations uh, in seats and jobs right after that we have seen the tribals then uh, then we saw the constituent assembly they spent many days discussing about the powers of the central government versus those of the state government finally to sort out that the constitution sought to balance these claims by providing three list of subjects right we saw the three list which were the three list a union list a state list and a concurrent list right then we have seen the subjects that were given to the union list that were given to the state list that were given in the concurrent list to look after right so this is what the centers and the state like that our powers were divided equally among them so this is what we have learned in the today's video lesson still the topic a constitution is written we will be continuing in the next lecture children till then children take very good care of your health thank you so much